In 1953, American professor Charles Hapgood published an article claiming that long before humans appeared on Earth, there was already another thriving civilization. This idea seemed utterly unbelievable, yet later on, the CIA classified those parts of his work. Why would intelligence agencies hide something that lacked a shred of common sense, right? Or were they afraid that the scientists' speculations might turn out to be pure truth? After all, our planet has been around for over four and a half billion years, while the Homo sapiens species emerged nearly 300,000 years ago. Do we really think that Earth couldn't have been home to someone other than humans over such an extensive period? What recent discoveries in this field will certainly make you question everything you thought you knew. In this video, we'll delve into the true IQ of dinosaurs, the way mushrooms might survive a nuclear apocalypse, and most importantly, the possibility of another civilization flourishing on Earth millions of years before the rise of humanity. Let's dive in. In our history, there are numerous gaps scientists prefer to discuss in general terms. One of such paradoxes is the construction of the pyramids. Researchers insist that people at that time were engaged only in primitive gatherings. But who erected these monumental structures? This is the Pyramid of Chichen Itza, located in Mexico. This is the tomb of the pharaoh Djoser in Egypt. And this is the sanctuary of Koker, situated in Cambodia. The thing is, all of them are built according to the same principle, but at entirely different times. Some similarities between these monuments cast doubt on the entirety of human history. Like the stones in their walls fit so perfectly that not even a human hair can squeeze through the gaps, and all of this without any binding mortar. Walls with a similar construction have been found near the city of Cusco in Peru, as well as in Greece, Japan, and even on Easter Island. Just to remind you, many of these locations are separated by vast oceans. It seems like all these structures were built by one culture much more advanced than the people of that time. Of course, such a theory may sound like a fantasy now, but could we ever discover traces of an ancient civilization if we didn't even bother to start searching? At least, this view is shared by Jason Wright, a leading astronomer at the Pennsylvania State University. Some of the most enigmatic phenomena of antiquity are still believed to be the incredible technological achievements of the Indus Valley Civilization. In 1829, amidst the territory of modern-day Pakistan, explorer Charles Masson stumbled upon the ruins of Harappa, a city that would leave even modern architects in awe. Its urban planning was unparalleled, with streets aligned precisely from north to south and east to west. But what was the purpose behind this meticulous layout? The answer lies in the city's advanced water management system. Judging by the findings of archaeologists, many inhabitants of this prehistoric capital had their own pools, constructed with thorough attention to technological features. The ancient builders sealed the bottoms of those pools with resin to ensure they were watertight. Fresh water flowed through specially designed pipes with a sophisticated drainage system efficiently carrying away wastewater. Meanwhile, other civilizations struggled to build even basic shelters. However, creating such pools without specialized tools would have been impossible. The people of the Indus civilization seemed to know how to handle complex iron tools long before the rest of the world. Most interestingly, scientists indeed managed to confirm this audacious theory in 1936 based on the findings on an entirely different territory. During excavations near the village of Saqqara, Egypt, archaeologists unearthed the so-called Serapiums, enormous granite boxes used for burial ceremonies. Egyptologists claim that these boxes were made during the 18th dynasty, between the 1550s and 1300 BC. However, during that time, the Egyptians hardly used any metal tools. So how did they manage to create these granite boxes with perfectly straight angles and remarkably smooth and thin walls? Besides, on the walls of some of these boxes, scientists discovered a few mysterious marks and strange grooves. Wait a minute, haven't we seen something similar before? The same grooves are left by modern drills. 
Could it be that another, more advanced civilization encouraged the development of ancient Egyptian society with complex mechanized equipment? But why do we still know so little about such a progressive culture? Why haven't we found any other substantial evidence that an advanced civilization once existed on Earth? The answer to this question may lie with astrophysicist Adam Frank and climatologist Gavin Schmidt. In 2017, these scientists attempted to envision what would remain of our own civilization if we simply vanished one day. The answer seemed obvious. The immense megacities would continue to stand without humans, perhaps only covered in a thick layer of moss. And if any civilization had constructed something similar before us, we would have undoubtedly discovered it by now. Archaeological excavations would have assisted us, but despite centuries of searching, humans have yet to find prehistoric skyscrapers. Does this mean they never existed? Or is everything not as evident as it seems? According to Frank and Schmidt, our own cities will disappear from Earth in just 10,000 years, leaving behind randomly scattered massive boulders. This says little about our civilization's development, doesn't it? So, it appears that only archaeology can assist us in the search for the most recent evidence. However, as time passes, the traces descend deeper underground and eventually turn to dust. Very little evidence remains even from Neanderthals, who lived only tens of thousands of years ago. But what if someone built an entire society on our planet long before that? You're probably ready to mention plastic. It takes much longer to decompose than organic materials. If there had indeed been an advanced civilization before us, they would have undoubtedly left behind such waste. Yet, researcher Alan Weissman claims in his book The World Without Us that if humans were to cease all activity right now, a significant portion of our plastic waste would eventually degrade due to ultraviolet radiation and bacteria in just 20,000 years. And if, for instance, a global catastrophe wiped out the previous civilization, its traces would disappear even faster. Although some surviving individuals may have resettled in other areas and passed on their knowledge to different cultures, that could be how the ancient Egyptian and Indus civilizations achieved such heights. The problem is further complicated by the fact that today, less than 3% of Earth's surface is inhabited. The previous civilization could have occupied an even smaller area. Even if they left behind waste similar to plastic, it's now even more challenging to find it than locating a single sand grain on an entire beach. Therefore, if there was a society identical to ours a billion years ago, we would hardly find any evidence today. But why are we so certain that ancient beings resembled us? Four and a half billion years ago, when our Earth was still forming, the climate was far more extreme than today. Our planet was constantly bombarded by meteorites and comets, and the atmosphere mainly consisted of water vapor, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane. None of the known species would have survived under such harsh conditions, but perhaps they proved an ideal environment for entirely different creatures. Wow. Max Bernstein, the head of the science mission directorate at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C., believes that a civilization in such a climate could very well look like a network of sentient crystals. After all, other beings may lack even the fundamental aspects we understand, such as reproduction or metabolism. The main, minimal criteria for the functioning of life can be considered the ability to accumulate energy and transmit information from generation to generation. But the means for that can turn out to be anything. In that case, billions of years ago, certain minerals could have developed an entire society without the assistance of DNA molecules. When a crystal grows, new atoms, layer by layer, adhere to its surface in a specific sequence. And if a small crystalline sheet breaks off, it retains these properties. It's remarkably similar to the birth of a new organism, isn't it? Moreover, there would indeed be no traces left after such a civilization. So, should we stop searching altogether? Or do humans still have a chance to find their prehistoric predecessors? Could an advanced civilization leave absolutely no evidence behind? Adam Frank and Gavin Schmidt believe we should still look for something. Yes, physical proof may be short-lived, but what about the indirect impact on our planet? 
Even if complex structures and mechanisms have long disintegrated into atoms, those atoms might have influenced the composition of Earth's crust. Schmidt and Frank hypothesized that any industrial civilization would have required energy to exist, even if this culture evolved millions of years ago. This means that any ancient industrial society, just like ours, would have extensively relied on fossil fuels, at least in the early stages of its development. After all, to build solar panels or waste-free hydroelectric power plants, mechanisms for such construction must be initially established. For that, we would definitely need additional energy sources, such as oil, coal, or even large amounts of wood. Such energy-intensive industrial processes, especially their waste, would undoubtedly have left physiochemical traces within the depths of our planet. In simple terms, we shouldn't be searching for the ruins of prehistoric factories, but rather the emissions from such production. Schmidt compares this to searching for fingerprints when investigating a crime. In such cases, we first try to gather maximum information and only then embark on finding the culprit. So why not apply the same method in the search for an ancient civilization? To begin with, we should pay attention to significant accumulations of radioactive elements in atypical places because it's improbable that they ended up there on their own. Strangely enough, this brings us back to the mysterious Indus Valley civilization. During excavations in the state of Rajasthan in northwest India, archaeologists discovered an entire layer of radioactive ash. But these incredible findings surely didn't end there. In 1977, researcher David Davenport embarked on excavations of the ruins of Mohenjo-Daro, a major Indus city. Soon, the scientists stumbled upon a pit with a diameter of 50 meters. All the stones inside seemed to have melted and transformed into a glass-like substance. But such a phenomenon could only occur at very high temperatures, reaching around 1,500 degrees Celsius. It gave the impression that a nuclear explosion had occurred on the territory of the Indus Valley civilization long before our era. Strangely enough, ancient legends only confirm such daring speculation. The Mahabharata is one of the greatest epic works of Indian literature that holds incredible cultural significance, not only in India, but also in many other parts of the world. And within its pages, there are descriptions of a powerful explosion shining as bright as 10,000 suns capable of burning down entire nations. Furthermore, it vividly portrays the aftermath of such a detonation, survivors losing their nails and hair, and the land and food becoming contaminated sounds just like the consequences of a nuclear catastrophe in Hiroshima, doesn't it? But even if the representatives of the Indus Valley civilization were advanced enough to create nuclear weapons as early as the 3rd millennium BC, they were still humans. However, what about pre-human societies? Oddly enough, in the history of our planet, there have been other periods that indirectly indicate intelligent intervention. Today, we live in the era of hyperthermia, a sudden rise in temperature in various parts of the globe caused by human activity. But 56 million years ago, something similar occurred on Earth. The temperature rose so drastically that the average mark at the poles reached 20 degrees Celsius. Of course, excessive industrial activity couldn't have been the cause. Or could it? Scientists now blame cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae. During that period, their population in the world's oceans increased several hundredfold. However, how exactly cyanobacteria managed to influence the climate remains a mystery. Or were they merely byproducts of another, far more advanced society? The concept of a crystalline civilization still appears too unfathomable to many scientists. Still, even they don't really deny the possibility that billions of years ago, other organisms might indeed have ruled our planet. So could humans possibly underestimate the abilities of those they encounter every day? In the year 2000, Japanese biologist Toshiyuki Nakagagi decided to conduct a mind-blowing experiment. He placed a sample of mold at the entrance of a maze used to test the intelligence and memory of mice. 
At the other end of it, he placed a sugar cube. And a few hours later, the scientist couldn't believe his eyes. The mold seemed to sense the sugar scent and began sending its threads searching for it. The mold's mycelium branched out at every intersection in the maze, and those that reached a dead end just turned around and started over. Soon enough, the mold had enveloped the long-awaited piece of sugar. In other words, the mold's intelligence was literally superior to that of some animals. Modest estimates suggest that there are around 160,000 strains of fungi on Earth. For millions of years, they silently evolved in the most challenging conditions, and now they're capable of altering their environment as effectively as intricate human technologies. For instance, in Chernobyl, where radiation levels still rise high in some areas, researchers discovered a fungus capable of feeding on radioactive waste while simultaneously cleansing the space around it. We consider ourselves the pinnacle of evolution, but how many of you can make the world a better place just with your presence? Moreover, a few years ago, during a study of the Amazon rainforest, a group of students from Yale University stumbled upon a fungus that can actually feed on plastic waste. It happened pretty unexpectedly. The fungus simply devoured the container where it was placed for further examination. But if millions of years ago, a civilization of intelligent fungi existed on Earth, what could it have looked like? What we usually call a mushroom is actually just the tip of the iceberg. The true mystery lies within the mycelium itself, a network of delicate filaments that practically envelops our entire planet. Within 10 cubic centimeters of soil, you can find a staggering 8 kilometers of fungal threads. So those mushrooms peeking out of the ground are merely the fingertips of these networks, the tools through which the organism disperses its spores. Nowadays, scientists largely agree that mycelium not only transports nutrients and chemicals, but also functions as an intelligent and self-learning communication network. The most mind-boggling part is that there's no central surface in fungi. Each filament operates independently, and the information it gathers can be transmitted in all directions throughout the mycelium. What's even more bizarre is that this pattern resembles the modern internet structure. It turns out that a remarkably advanced communication system has been lying right beneath our feet all this time. In ancient times, such a mycelium network could not only contribute to the development of other organisms, like cyanobacteria, but also cover its tracks. I mean, if intelligent fungi once produced plastic or even radioactive weapons, they long ago rid themselves of these waste products. So it seems humans won't be able to find any evidence in the end. Well, who said Earth could have harbored only one civilization? Perhaps new societies emerge on our planet every few tens of thousands of years, especially considering we've managed to acquire some intriguing clues after all. In 1970, in one of the episodes of the legendary TV series Doctor Who, the so-called Silurians appeared. They were fantastic humanoid reptiles. According to the storyline, they were the first intelligent beings on Earth. Of course, at that time, it was all just innocent entertainment. However, this concept was later backed up by specific scientific justifications. We've all seen the enormous fossilized remains of dinosaurs, but do we know how they actually lived? For many years, the scientific community believed dinosaurs were ferocious and rather dumb creatures. After all, according to the analysis of their cranial cavities, the brain of the massive stegosaurus was no larger than a walnut. However, recent research indicates otherwise. In 2021, paleontologist Diego Pohl proved that most dinosaurs were far more intelligent than we had thought. For instance, individuals of the Mayasaurus species returned to the same place every year to nest, meaning they possessed enough intelligence to remember the location and assess its good points. It's highly likely that Mayasaurus even developed a division of labor. Males guarded the nesting females and eggs, while adolescent dinosaurs explored the surroundings in search of suitable food. This is much more complex behavior than that of creatures with walnut-sized brains. After having analyzed this data, researcher Lori Marino concluded that most dinosaurs resembled intelligent birds rather than sluggish reptiles. Have you ever witnessed a crow or a parrot distracting a human's attention to let another bird snatch a couple of snacks? Trust me, 
they're capable of much more. It's astonishing that birds also have small brains compared to the rest of their bodies. Even though that's what allows them to fly, is they would struggle to lift their heads if they were too heavy. Nevertheless, the neurons in their brains are densely packed, with several times more neural connection per gram of brain compared to mammals. This means a small brain didn't prevent dinosaurs from building their own empire. After all, the human brain today isn't significantly different from the brains of our primitive ancestors. But that hasn't stopped us from launching spaceships. So why do we underestimate the ancient reptiles to such an extent? This is the Troodon, a genus of small dinosaurs that scientists consider one of the most intelligent. Some researchers even speculate that they bred their larger relatives much like livestock. In other words, they may have advanced at least to the level of an agricultural society. Weirdly enough, their physical features bear a striking resemblance to something human. Could they be the true Silurians, the ancient beings who developed a sophisticated civilization long before humans appeared on Earth? What do you think?